Welcome to part four of our eighth grade lab safety discussion. Please make sure to finish filling in your student version of this presentation to count as your notes for our lab safety mini unit. For this part, we're going to be talking about working with acids and or bases. We'll generally just refer to these as chemicals to keep things simple. So number one, just like when working with fire and heat, the first thing to do is to listen to all pre-lab instructions before working with chemicals so you know the safety information and how to safely clean up after the lab. Not only will you know how to clean up the, the materials, but you also know where to get them from and how to safely mix them together. And we will review how much of the chemicals you should be using. So number two, always wear goggles. Whenever you're working with chemicals, you should be wearing goggles. Again, there's a continuum of how hazardous chemicals are to your body. You should always be aware of that. Anything that's hazardous to your body will be required to use goggles. Sometimes you may need to wear an apron and gloves. So I have a picture, remember, with our goggles. These are uh, indirect vent chemical resistant impact goggles. So they have the little vents here on each area. And remember to make sure that those vents are closed at all times to protect your eyes. The aprons we have are these black rubberized type aprons with a loop that goes up over your neck and then strings. It's always a good idea if you're not as coordinated as others, like myself, I'm very uncoordinated trying to tie this, that you have somebody else who you can trust to tie it and make sure you don't tie these strings into knots. There are different types of gloves that people can use, whether in the lab area or at home. And if you notice, they're labeled for you. The green one is a Playtex type glove, which is good for general cleaning. The second one is a type that's market style, which you can go buy at a store here in town and use. Um, those are pretty good for general purpose chemicals, but when it comes to super powerful chemicals, you might need something a little bit stronger, more durable. Latex gloves. Now with this, you have to be careful because if you buy latex gloves and you have a latex allergy, it could cause you some severe allergic re reactions. So you want to make sure you know whether or not you're allergic to latex if you buy gloves for home use. And then there's the nitrile gloves, which they're very good at most resisting most chemicals. So you always want to check out the chemical you're using and what it recommends for you to use for gloves. Number three, strong acids and bases can cause serious chemical burns. They'll both hurt your skin, but they do it in different ways. The strong acid will cause the proteins in your skin to fall apart, and you'll notice redness and itching and irritation. Um, an example of a strong acid you may be familiar with would be battery acid, whether it's from a dry cell battery like in a flashlight or in a wet cell battery that would be under the hood of your vehicle or in a four-wheeler or something like that or for a boat. Um, those can cause major problems for you, so you want to make sure you're very careful around batteries and strong acids. A strong base can also cause a chemical burn. What it does is it pulls the moisture out of your skin. If you've ever noticed somebody that works in concrete oftentimes has very rough hands if their gloves aren't really good or the right type. That's because the concrete is a base, the lie in the concrete is a base, and it pulls the um, moisture out of their skin and causes them to have rough hands. That's one of the reasons why they have rough hands. But another type of base would be something like... Um, a liquid plumber, a liquid draino, some sort of a drain cleaner. Those are really strong bases made of primarily sodium hydroxide, and those can cause some serious damage to your body. So you want to be really careful. If you contact either, tell your teacher, flush the area with water immediately. If you're at home, tell your parents right away, and you may need to go to the doctor. Number four, this one's a painful one. Not only to talk about, but even more painful to experience. If you get a chemical in your eye, tell your teacher immediately. Flush your eye from your nose to your ear, which is from the inside to the outside. The school nurse or 911 will be called. Scenario here. If you're working in the lab area, generally people are very safe because we, we get on you if you're not wearing your goggles. We'll let you know you need to get your goggles on, cover your eyes, cover your eyes. Usually when people get hurt is they've done their lab, everything's great, they've been safe, and they wash their hands after they take their goggles off. And so what happens then is if you take, you've done your lab, you go over, you put your goggles away, 
when there's a change in air pressure, once you've taken your goggles off, all of a sudden your eye might start to itch, and you itch your eye when you're walking from the goggle cabinet over to wash your hands. Now you've just contaminated your eye and you have a problem. That's when most incidents would happen in a lab situation. So you want to make sure you wash your hands before you take your goggles off. Because that way, if anything was to splash up into your eyes, it'd hit the goggles before it hits your eyeball when you're washing your hands. And also, your hands are clean once you take your goggles off. So if you hit your eye, hopefully you don't. But if you do, hopefully your hands are clean. Now, if you get something in your eye, what I'd like you to do is just close one eye and open the eyelid of your other if you're not wearing contact lens. Don't do this if you're wearing contacts. You don't want to lose your contacts. And hold your eyelid open, your eye open as far as you can. And try to do it for 30 seconds and see, see how uncomfortable that is. Now, I'm not going to wait the full 30 seconds. You could pause the video to do that. But imagine doing that. And let's say I have this stuff in my right eye. I would lean my head down so my right eye is down. And then I would open my eye really wide. I may have to have somebody help me. And then I have to run the cold water from the emergency eye wash station across my eyeball until the school nurse and or paramedics get to our building to help you the rest of the way. That's going to be a very painful experience. Please be careful that you don't get things into your eyes. All right, now some of you are probably wondering, well, what is an aster of base? I don't remember this from our other science discussions or other years too well. Well, I have this little um, image just to show you some examples of things. So this is called the pH scale. The lower the number, the more acidic it is, so the more dangerous it is to you. The higher the number, the more basic it is but it too is more dangerous for you. Things operating somewhere in this range from here to here with moderation are okay usually, depending upon if you have allergies and things like that. But the more extreme the numbers, the more dangerous it is to you. So you wanna make sure you avoid battery acid. You wanna make sure you avoid drain cleaners. They're definitely not good to have in your body. Some of these other things can cause problems for you too if you have allergies, so remember, be careful. If you want to know more about this, just ask or check out YouTube. They have great videos on the difference between acids and bases. All right, now contact lenses. For those of you who wear contact lenses instead of glasses, this is a major hazard if we're working with a powerful chemical. Um, this will be more of a hazard for you when you get to high school or college if you decide to go to college. Or if you're working at home, this could be a major problem for you with some certain chemicals you may work with if you work in a... Um, industry where they use a lot of heavy chemicals you have a lot at your home or you're working in say farming or something like that. But contact lenses should never be worn when working with strong chemicals. The problem is that the vapors get up underneath your contact lens and they sit there and they eat away at your eyeball. If that sounds gross and disgusting and painful, you're right. And so what happens then is they have to, the doctor will have to try to remove that lens from your eye and then they're going to have to try to treat it, and that could cause permanent damage and scarring in your eye, which means that you're going to have some major problems for the rest of your life. So you want to be very careful. If we're going to use a chemical that's that powerful in class, we will definitely tell you a few days ahead of time, and then we'll remind you the night before and let you know, do not wear your contact lenses, so wear your glasses. Now, if you don't have glasses and you have to wear contact lenses, then that means that you may be in a situation where you have to stay away from the chemicals and be a data recorder versus someone who is manipulating the substances. Number six, you always tell your teacher right away if a chemical spill happens. Do not attempt to clean up the spill by yourself unless directed to do so by your teacher. You could be injured if you try to improperly clean up a chemical spill. Now in the pre-lab, we will tell you whether or not you should clean up the chemical spill or whether we should clean it up, and we'll give you specifics about that. We'll also tell you how to properly dispose of the chemicals when you're all done. So please make sure if you have questions during that pre-lab time, ask those questions. If you have questions during the lab, ask those questions. So there are some labs where we use chemicals that are pretty powerful, and we will tell you straight up, don't touch it. If you think there's a spill or you made a spill, you know there's a spill, let me know. I'll get the materials from the chemical spill kit on the wall, and then I will have to clean it up. I'll get all gloved up have my apron on, my goggles on, get you guys away from it, and then we'll be safe, okay? And number seven, this works for whether you're in the classroom or whether you're at home. Whenever you have to mix two chemicals together, especially something with water, 
And if it isn't with water, it's the lesser of the two harmful chemicals. Always add the main, most powerful chemical to the water when mixing chemicals. So if something does splash on your skin, it will hopefully be the water that splashes onto you and not the chemical itself. Now, imagine this, since I can't show you this as a live demonstration right here. Imagine that you have a glass, and you could do this at home and just try it out if you had some Kool-Aid or something like that. Have a glass with some water in it, and then take the glass of the Kool-Aid, and then dump the Kool-Aid into the water glass, okay? What you'll notice is the Kool-Aid, as you dump it into the glass with just water in it, the Kool-Aid will go down to the bottom. So if anything splashes up and out, in theory, it should be the water. And the reason why is because the water is being displaced as the Kool-Aid goes to the bottom, and so it's being pushed up and out. So hopefully, if you do that, even if you do it fairly quickly, then you should realize that you shouldn't get a lot of the Kool-Aid on your skin. It should just be the clear water. Okay. And that is the conclusion of our part three, other than our quick reminder that remember to satisfy the requirements for doing labs, there are three things you have to do. One is turn in your completed safety signature sheet, which hopefully by this point in time you have. If not, please get it turned in. And remember, turn the whole sheet in. There will be a digital version PDF of it on Google Classroom for you to look at later. Number two, complete and turn in your lab safety notes, which is the student version of this presentation that you've been working on. Make sure that you get it turned in to your teacher. And if you don't, then it doesn't count. And number three, we will be having the lab safety assessment very soon now that we've completed our notes and our discussion. And you have to score at a level of proficiency to be eligible to be doing the labs, especially the labs dealing with fire and chemicals. If you need to retake that assessment, you may do so, and we'll talk about in class what it takes to retake assessments. Thank you, and if you have any questions about lab safety, please ask.